is I'm going to call a meeting together the committee of the African American History Initiative meeting Tuesday, June 6, 2021. And I'll go through our, our motions. To conduct this meeting wholly electronically, the committee needs to make certain findings for the record to evidence our compliance with all applicable laws. These motions address this compliance. First, I'm going to conduct a roll call and ask each board member participating in this meeting to state your name and your location. I ask that each of you pay close attention to ensure that you can hear each of your colleagues. So I'll begin. Mary Lipsy, co-chair. Mary Lipsy in Springfield. Barbara Nafe. Barbara Nafe in Reston. Tammy Marino. Tammy Manorino, I'm in Stanton today. Ann Stunts. She's muted. I thought I saw her. She she's is. There. She's muted. There she is. Come here, Ann Stunts, uh, South Side, Vienna, Virginia. Can everybody hear her? No, I could me? not. Testing I one, two, three, four. Okay. Can anybody hear me? That's that's better. Uh, Esther McCullough is excused. Jordan Tenenbaum. Jordan um, is teaching Barbara, classes for several days, so I don't think he can join us. Right. Barbara Peters. Barbara Peters, Annandale, Virginia. Uh, Cheryl Rapetti is excused. Um, she is working today. Sue Kovac Schumann. Sue Kovac, Chairman Mantua. Hi, everybody. Hey. Lynn Garvey-Harge. I'm here and Springfield District Gal. Okay, Liz Kroll. Liz Kroll and Alexandria. Christopher Barbershack. Hi, Chris Barbershack, City of Fairfax. David Meyer, I think he's not. Uh, Carol Herrick. Carol Herrick, McLean, Virginia. And Denise Dressel. Denise Dressel, Haymarket, Virginia. Okay. At this point, I will pass the virtual gavel to our co chair, Mary, so that I may make the appropriate motions. I move that the AAHI committee certify for the record that each member's voice may be adequately heard by each other member of the committee. So move. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, second, need for electronic meeting. Second, I move that the committee certify that the state of emergency caused by the COVID-19 pandemic make it, makes it say, unsafe for this committee and the public to physically attend this meeting in person. And the usual procedures cannot be implemented safely or practically. As a result, I further move that the committee conduct this meeting electronically through a dedicated video and audio conferencing line and that the public may access the meeting by calling 1-844-621-3956 and entering access code 173-070-3270. Um, second. Need to. Yeah. Need a second. second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Third, need to dispense with FOIA's usual procedures to assure continuity and government continue operations. Finally, I move that the committee certify that the members on the matters on the agenda today relate to the COVID-19 emergency itself are necessary for continuing in Fairfax County government and or our statutory will be required or necessary to continue operations and the discharge of the committee's purpose, duties, and responsibilities. 
and uh, Mary can give the gavel back and we'll get started. Thank there you, you go. <laughs> okay. Um, hopefully we, we will be discussing three things today and um, then we can work on those. Um, we sent the uh, template out last after our last meeting, uh, which was May the 8th. And so, uh, Mary, did, did you want to talk a little bit about that? Um, the, uh, I'm hearing an echo. Are you? Okay. I'm not. I'll just no. deal with it. Okay. So, yeah, if everybody uh, could just mute themselves, then, then I think that that uh, takes care of the echo. It's just a feedback. Okay. Uh, the template we looked at and Phyllis and I uh, came up with one, tried to incorporate Barbara's uh, suggestions and sent out to everybody. So hopefully you got a copy. Um, I'm working from it. And if you have any questions, you should be sure and ask. I think it's, uh, this is Barbara. I think it's great. It's, it, I think provides the information we need. And, um, I'm hoping by using that, we can put this information onto our website so people can, which is the purpose. I think of what we're doing is that they can then see what's available and we can build on it all the time. So I applaud you all. <clears throat> What well, it is versatile in terms that if you want to put a multiple items in one template, for example, I did the Fitchu family, and that included Oak Hill, Ocean Hall, and Ravensworth, which were all slaveholders and um, had state quarters. So I've put that information. I added two historical markers and also slave cemeteries that I'm aware of. Uh, I believe that's it, but they're all connected to the Fitchu family. So oh. the, the category was family. Uh, Mary, I see you as logged in twice. Video on problem. one and sound on the other, and that might be why you're getting so much feedback. Yeah, that's okay. about, that's exactly what I was going to say, Mary. Can when I finish, to... I'm, I'll log out and come back in. Okay. Okay. But anybody have any questions? Okay. Um, I guess I had a question, like the most recent copy, like of the, the definitive copy of the template is dated which date? Thank you for asking that. That's why I just put that in the chat too, because I have two copies, but not the definitive. Maybe she can resend it. I don't think I received it. This is Carol. Mm I'm one of those with just one screen, so I can't look it up while we're talking. Phyllis, I believe you're on mute. I think it was sent out the week after the meeting, but I will send it out again this, evening, this afternoon after I get back to my screen on it. That'd be great. Yeah, just the, don't have to have it right this second, but just yeah. <laughs> when yeah, it'll, it'll it'll be this afternoon. That is that, that'll, that'll be the. I'm operating. I'm operating between two two meetings this morning and, <laughs> and having my granddaughters and trying to spend a little bit of time with them before the, this meeting started. So yes, I apologize for not sending it out earlier today. That is fine. <laughs> okay. Okay, um, I'm back in. <laughs> okay. Um, we talked about at the last meeting, we talked about um, the history conference 
November 6th, and we listed a whole bunch of things. And Lynn is on with us today. So I think that'll make it a little bit easier for um, what we were doing. Um, Lynn, we were going to be looking at doing some things in the afternoon that would share information about the um, our committee. Oh, I think that's fantastic. And I thought we were going to also do that in the morning as kind of part of the overview for the day. It's on two places on the agenda right now. Y'all are on two places. Right, but in, in the morning, it was just going to be a brief introduction to what, what the committee is and, and right, what it's right. doing. I, but I just wanted to make sure you knew that that was not a forgotten piece of the morning. Okay. Okay. But but in the afternoon, we're we're helping with the agenda for the afternoon. Perfect. Because right Perfect. now, right now you have uh, Ron Chase at Gum Springs. Exactly, and then kind of bookending the day, at least temporarily, as our last conversation went, is to have Laniel kind of touch on all the um, ancestors that she's related to. So, um, anyway. That's anything else then you want to feed in. I'm all ears too, because we really don't have clarity around what all else might fit in there. I put in question marks of different people, but you know, uh, beyond the, the keynote speaker of um, Noah, Cincinnati, we really have nothing else definitive. So I'm really anxious to hear what you guys have, what ideas you've tossed around. We can fill it out. <laughs> We can fill it up. Perfect. <laughs> you gotta yes. tell us how much time. How much time do you gonna give us? Well, let's see. Didn't we talk in the other committee meeting about Ron Chase kind of maybe only taking about 20 minutes? And that if Laniel talks, I don't know, 20 to 30 minutes. So everything in between. So the, the time frame, the whole time frame was from 115 to 315, but Ron was starting. At 1.15. And he's on oh, video at the museum, right? Right. Yeah. And, and I think I, I think that's the best way to handle it, even if we do, which it now appears as we are going to do some of the conference uh, on site at Sherwood. I think having that a pre videotape piece would be most expeditious and easy for everybody. Plus, you know, you can see the museum. That, that was my. Right joy and his right. willingness to do that yes. yeah that's yes. a great idea okay. yeah then i then we need to we can choose we can choose talking about um phyllis didn't didn't you and mary say you have someone that can talk about carrollton um yes i think could, but that's so that, that would that, that would be probably seven minutes maybe at the most and I don't know if you all tossed around this or not. You know, I, I spent an afternoon with Naomi last week. Um, her little video on the Pines is nice, but maybe a, a, if we don't use the video, just again, a, a talking piece to overview that story. It is such a horrifically sad, tragic story and certainly not a standalone in the county, but I think it's something that people can get pretty quickly because of the recency of it you know it's in the 1960s so that's my thought on that but you guys might have some other ideas on what else lynn, should... lynn i did several interviews for providence of people who lived through that oh you and, did yeah okay um, dolly hill is the one i'm thinking of uh and sue i sure hope i've sent you those interviews you um, sent you sent I I've saved Dolly Hill, so you sent you at least yeah. sent yeah. yeah, yeah, I see Dolly that. Hill and Helen Haight. Yeah. And um there's one more. I'll have yeah. to go back. Okay. But anyway, um yeah, they they lived through that. Um okay. All right. So we could position that also as a component live stream and in person. But neither one of them, are you talking about them talking? Uh, I don't think they're alive anymore. 
I know Helen Haight has passed away. Does that matter? I mean, I think we can still present. Oh, them we can still tell people. the story. Yes. Well, can yeah. we still present the video as this is the late whoever? Could we not do that? I think. Well, we they're could. not on video. They're oh, no, but Naomi, she said Naomi has a video. Right. Mary, Mary, this is Chris. We have the video here on DVD. It hasn't been digitized, but we do have it here. How long well, is good. It Naomi's video? Yeah, how long is it? I don't know. Uh, the Providence Perspective Collection was donated, I think, last year. Um, all the transcripts are online, but I haven't looked at the the videos themselves. But I'm I'm pretty sure it's on DVD. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's find out how much that is. If it's in with the, the six to eight minute time frame, um, or even a snippet of it could sort of tell her story, uh, or the Pine story rather. I think that would be wonderful. That first person reality is always so. Well, certainly gut wrench wrenching, but also captivating, I think, for for an audience. And and maybe Mary could do an introduction to it. Oh, I think that'd be beautiful. I think and, that's and, um, the cemetery is still there. So yes. That part's good. Um, yeah. we also were thinking talking about, and this is um um between uh Phyllis and Mary, but to have one of, at least one of the students that did the um the interview the oral interview um talk about it and that would be a few minutes as well i think i passed to mary and phyllis on that because it's getting I talked to i talked to brian heinz yesterday i actually um met him for a few few minutes to exchange um a gift and, and he thought the idea of inviting the two students, Celine and Nia, to the conference and having them talk a little bit about what they were able to do in terms of the interviews that they actually did would be good. And he said it would be something that they could put on their resume to say that they actually uh, participated in the conference. So he, oh, he uh, encouraged that would them. Be great. That would be great. Them. Because and then, then, what was their topic? Or was it new? They interviewed five African American county residents, including from, Phyllis. From any particular name? Okay, Phyllis, we know where you live. What What was it geographically? Remember? Uh, Vienna, Centerville, Bailey's um, Crossroads. Bailey's Crossroads. Yeah, they, all but one went to Luther Jackson. That's, that's oh. good. Maryfield. Yeah. I think that's a. I think that's an absolute. If if they can come up for the weekend and do that, it would be absolutely absolutely wonderful. So do you know where they went to college? Um, no, but I'm going to find out because Celine just sent me an email that um, she wants me to do a recommendation for a scholarship. For oh, okay. So um, later on today, I'm going to answer. Her I email. thought somebody, Mary, or somebody told me it was Norfolk State. And Hampton. That's, that's what they were. One was considering Norfolk State, and, and one was considering Hampton. So we're not sure that those good. those were the selected schools. Okay, well, I think because that they just graduated last last week. That's um, great, great. And uh, Chris, Chris Barbershock, have you gotten their recordings yet? I did. Uh, they sent me a link this morning. I haven't downloaded it yet, but okay. uh, I got two emails from them. Yes. Okay. Mary, which which three interviews did you want me to look for for videos of? They are Providence, and it's Dolly Hill, Helen Haight, and one other. Okay. Um, I'll send you an email. Okay. Right now, the third name's escaping me. When last week, last month, when we were talking about this, the ones we mentioned were starting with Gum Springs, and then just in no particular order was. Carrollton, which you've got, Bailey's, Vienna, and Pleasant Grove, and and Pleasant Grove, and um, and then remember we talked about the um, the high school before we had Luther Jackson. If there was anybody who talked about that, the Manassas, Manassas or Washington or Alexandria. I mean, there there were possible other choices too. So well, people for these the interviews, I think at least two of them went to Manassas Industrial too. Good. And what, people what from the Pines, people from the Pines, I think. 
Sorry. Sorry. Say that again. What's the total time we're fit where we've got for this section? If we start at 115. If we start at 115. And right now, you know, the end is somewhat fluid. We've got till 315. And book ended that would be um let's see about 20 and another 20. So you go you 40 minutes that have already been taken, but you said the rest of that time can fit in between. I think that's a nice part of the sandwich there. Yeah. I know oh, now maybe to be have to squeeze less than 30 minutes, but then everybody else is. So perhaps so that could happen if if we really run out of minutes. Well, and we can we can do mm -hmm. we can stretch it out too, guys. It doesn't have to end at 315. It could be 330, 345. That would give you another half hour too. So consider that. I think yeah. the idea of incorporating um, videos as well as people there, since we're hybrid, I guess we're going to be hybrid. Is that right? Lynn? It, looks like, it mm -hmm. looks like it's, I, I did a quick straw poll on my uh, Facebook page yesterday, and then I've just been talking to people and a lot of folks like all of us, we kind of miss in together. So I think hybrid makes the most sense because okay. we need to remember there's other folks out there like Esther that have some serious medical issues and exposing themselves to situations that are still not completely trustworthy is not a good idea. Right. So, but Sherwood well, has, I, 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 well, let me just say this one last thing. Sherwood has assured me that they will be as on top of any CDC guidelines for a gathered meeting as possible. Um, I don't have an exact headcount for what they would allow in there, but as a conversation Liz and I had the other day, um, Liz was saying some of these CDC rules are changing literally by the day. So who knows what's going to be like that. But I doubt if, but I would love to think we're going to have a packed house, but I don't know if, if, um, you know, physiologically and safety wise, that even makes sense. So, no. I, I want to, yeah, I, I agree with what you just said, Lynn. Yesterday was the first meeting for the March Virginia Association of Museums planning conference. And they already are saying that they need to either do hybrid or just maybe go all the way again virtual because everything is in flux and all the big hotels and every big venue. So, for us to just say that we're going to do hybrid makes sense. We may have to go virtual again. We just don't know so much. No, we don't. That's right. That's right. Myself and and to that comment, Sue, we may discover once we put the brochure out and people start responding that all we get are hybrid interests. You know, That's right? People are a little spoiled that they don't have to worry about parking. They just turn on their computers, and there we are. You know. <laughs> They're just going to you know, miss that that good food. The That's what's going to happen. They're going to miss that good food and that joviality, and Jerry Connolly will be chagrined. <laughs> well, and and even this is this is a, the African American History Meeting, not the conference meeting. But I will throw out that you know if we are doing food in post COVID times, it's a little different than it used to be with everybody and helping their hands. If so, that's for another meeting discussion. But the point is. We need to get the content and I think the idea of the of videos interspersed with people talking is a nice blend. Plus yeah, the yeah. videos are, you know, few people forget that we have this, this wonderful resource. So I think they're, you know, so at this point we have, we have, we have Ron Chase, we have Carrollton, we have uh, some way we're handling the pines. Um, and we have the students, um, and we have, um, the Clifton. Sure. Yeah. Whose name was keep forgetting. Yeah. 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 So well, that's, we're, a, we're, that's but you know, blend. if you guys, if you and the rest of you, I didn't I mean to just make this just at Barbara, cause y'all are part of this committee, whatever you suggest or think would be just totally awesome for our constituency to learn about. You know, I think we should That's the, the overlap of spaces. Right. Is, 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 a good, is a good thing. 
this is up to Phyllis and Mary, well, everybody, but depending on what we have, if we're, if part of it is, is a video, can we just put up on the great screen our page and show him, show him part, part of this incredible listing that we have? That'll blow everybody away. I so I think so. And I even, Barbara, you know how in um, prior years when you got your confirmation of your registration, then we would send out that attachment that had all these references in it, you know, links and books and articles. That's also going to be a great place to, to respond to our uh, constituency with that, with that information. What do you think, Phyllis and Mary? <laughs> I'm fine with that. I'm just looking at timing. Um, I I don't. You really think Ron can do his uh, museum in 20 minutes? I've not been there, so I don't know. Well, we'll just say this is part of it being in the in the. That's up to Phyllis because she's got she can handle Ron down there, but in his space, then it kind of contains him. Okay. Well, that I say that with great affection, but still. Because I'm looking if I I put down here Ron and Lineal doing an hour, you know, and that includes the transition between the two of them. Too much. So that so that leaves an hour in that afternoon time frame. I think that's too much. I think we should cut them. Originally, we were talking about Ron having like 15 minutes in the museum. Okay. Yeah, well, well, I was thinking kind of 20, 20, which is 40, and then like a maybe a three minute segue, or not even a segue. Maybe, you know, Ron segues into right into the pines and they pick up, you know, that piece picks up from there. So I think it could be kept uh, close, closer to 40, not a full hour. Okay. Combined, yes, combined. Yeah. Correct, correct. Phyllis, does that seem feasible? I think for Ron, 20, maybe 25 minutes, because he's he's going to talk about the community, which includes the church, the school, and and the associations, or the, the uh, like the, the pride of Fairfax, which is um, one of the uh, buildings that's being looked at for the National Register. Yeah. So he, he may need a little more. So, so 20 to 25, probably. I agree. Tammy, you have been there recently, right? Um, I was going to say probably two years ago. I think, well, recently. Okay. Minus COVID, recently minus COVID, yeah. And uh, there's, yeah. there's a lot there, but it's one of those things where, you know, you can go as deep as you can within a limited time. You just have to frame it for how long. Yeah. Um, so I think, I think if he pans probably, around and, and shows yeah. pictures of the school, pictures of the church, churches. There's um, wonderful that, photographs, there's wonderful artifacts that are in there, and, um, and he can tell a story. I mean, he really can, yeah. so. Um, yeah, but I think it's just a matter of having an outline of, you know, what's in and what's out, just bounding it in some way, just finding a way to frame it. Right. Right. And, and right. I, you know, I don't know if maybe Phyllis wants to sir. I'm just go walk through the museum with him and say, hey, Ron, this is great. This is great. This is great. I'd love to see him begin standing right next to that picture of West Ford and then oh, kind yeah. of moving on from there. What do you think about yeah. that, Phyllis? Okay. That's that's good, but he he also has um, pictures of Woodlawn, um, and as Tammy knows from from going to the Fort Belvoir uh, Woodlawn Cemetery yeah. a couple of weeks ago, I guess it was. Yeah, he can he can just sort of touch on that and move move on. So yeah, I think so. I think that's great to have to have something or or Tammy or Phil somebody with him to kind yes. of guide. It. Yes, absolutely. Yes, and I think you have to work with him on, on an outline or something of you know yes. just to yes. kind of you know, um, focus yeah. focus yeah. the concepts, the things he's going to touch on, the highlights out, out of Good everything. Idea. So, Good idea. Hey, Phyllis. Phyllis. Yeah, I'm willing. 
to go out there one day and without planning to tape, just kind of make a list of yes, 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 yes. yes. Do you know what I mean? Okay. So we can bring yeah. things back to the, the two committees to kind of get a sense of oh, where we're going to make that. The other thing I like about him starting with West Ford is he can also end up with where West Ford is buried, which is Mount Vernon. And, and anyway, so it has a big right. minute. To it. Okay, that's all I need to say. I'm taking up y'all's time. Who is doing the filming? We count on it being channel 16. It would be channel 16. Okay. Lynn, I think we lost you. We lost you. I think she left. I don't know. She's there. I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Oh, okay. I'm here. Can you hear me now? That's so yes. weird. Okay. Yeah, no, I'm here. There we go. Can you hear me now? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. So then my question was who's doing the filming at the museum? I'll work with Pam on that because this whole day will be embedded with different video, you know, pieces. How we're going to do that is yet to be fully defined. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to have to sign off in about five minutes. So anyway. Okay, and who's going to do Carrollton? Phyllis, do you know? Phyllis, you're muted again. It's going to be either Evelyn Russell or myself. Okay. And the Pines part of that is Mary because of the uh, because of the old interviews and right part of it is Naomi's video mm -hmm. so okay and the student interviews are going to be the students I think we filled it out did we fill it out yeah, yeah pretty we got to be pretty close and I got to tell you I, I mean, Naomi and I sat and watched the videos last week together you know uh -huh. they are just um they're 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 heart touching and gut wrenching at the same time. You know, yeah. it's just pretty powerful stuff. And Naomi has videos of, of other parts of the county also, because I know she has a, the interview with um, Gladys Bushrod in the Mount Vernon yeah. district area. Yeah, and I have that. She gave all that to me. Um, and then she gave me a whole book of, uh, I think some of the transcriptions of this here. Let me go check my little box of things she gave me. and. I tell you exactly what I have on hand. I have um, Collins and the Lee story, which is very interesting. The celebration of African Americans kind of thing that's more about uh, Cook House. Gladys Cook, her interview, and then also Collins uh, marker dedication in 2017. So I've got those. The Did she do any interviews? Do not have those. What was your question, Barbara? I'm not sure. I don't recognize those, but I could check. Okay, all right. Okay, good. Where do we go next? Do we think we, we have enough? I think so. I don't know what yeah. y'all. I think so. Okay. okay. Thank you. Question. This is Carol. Uh, what about Pleasant Grove? Yeah, we included. Did we include that? I thought we did. I Anne had mentioned it, but I don't think you all had mentioned it. Uh, that that was on the that was on the list. Right. Okay. I, I think it's him. I think it's him. But I don't, I don't think we listed who was going to do it. 
Carol, no, I have... Carol, will you do it? Oh, 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 I, I, I'll try and find somebody who's more qualified than I am. But yeah, I mean, if we have plans, I mean, no. I'll, I would rather not do it and have somebody else do it. I'll find someone. The things about Pleasant Grove is that um, the, the connection with the connection with an, with the Pamunkeys, and uh, there we can you know bring up when you're telling the story of all Native Americans had to be listed as as um, black, um, and the fact that they have a little museum, and the fact that it's right there. Up the road from Audric's Corner, you could just just could mention it in talking about it. I and we might we might have a marker by then, maybe. Maybe. Good luck. Yeah. So <laughs> I well, think that but, it wouldn't be. Put, put Pleasant Grove down, and I mean, I will do it, but I would rather have somebody who's uh, um, somebody else do it. So we'll we'll talk about that later. Okay, I got okay. it in a minute. Okay. Just, and, and Chris, Chris just listed in the chat that um, one of Naomi's videos is the amazing Gladys Cook bush ride from uh, the the uh, Dunstan area of Mount Vernon district. Uh, and I've got that too, and it is pretty amazing. The thing is, you probably don't want to play some of those videos all the way through. No. Uh, right. Bits right. and pieces of them. <clears throat> Okay, guys, I'm no, going to sign off. It's at 3.30, so you are doing great work. I'm so honored to work with you guys and have a fantastic day. Thank you, Lynn. Thank you, Lynn. Okie dokie. Bye-bye. Bye. Okay, so it's 3.11 and we're moving right along. We've got the conference nailed down. We've got the template that we discussed and the the next thing on the list is what is our final product going to look like and creating a database and that's the hardest hardest part <laughs> <laughs> so um cheryl had sent sent this email this morning and said that uh, she had talked to our um, website person the history um, Commission website person, and she had some, he had some questions, and she's got to get back to him with those answers. Um, and then she said that Chris had done some, some things, but my, my, I guess my concern as I thought about it is before we can design the final database product, we've got to know what it is we want in that, that listing. So, are we looking to um, as in, are we looking for something interactive? Are we looking for for embedded links to that will take us to a particular subject or topic? And I'm not sure that that we agreed on on doing that. So can we can we just kind of toss that around? Do we have an example of things that we do like? That's either no, 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 um, no. We we don't. Um, I mean, I'll try to find out what I don't. When you say interactive, I'm not sure what that would be. I think you know, a list of things to links is. Well, I'm I'm, I'm thinking with with some. Sometimes there are, there are lists in a database where you can click on something and it takes you to something else. Is that is that the kind of thing we want? Which I think is more is is more difficult to do. It's darn useful though. Yeah. Um, and of course you have to keep on top of it to make sure everything's still working. Um, yeah. I I I love. I'm a big fan of. Uh, going the way you just said, Sue, if we could maybe look at some other uh, groups who've done this project and see how they've organized it, you know, Montgomery County or else the historical, somebody over there in Montgomery County has done a big project on their African-American history and Prince George's County has 
but I haven't looked at their websites in so long. I don't know if there's something we would like, but there's a ton, you know, when we were doing, of course, when we were doing Confederate names, we were just looking and looking at what the rest of the world was up to, to get some inspiration and to try to, well, what do we want to do? So maybe, maybe we can't even really decide today, but we can talk about these issues. Like, do you make it hard or do you make it static, which is easier? I don't know. I think like cemetery group have veteran databases, like an Excel spreadsheet, and you can, uh, if if there's a find a grave uh, mention, then you will click on that link and it takes you to the find a grave. Or if there's a photo of their marker at Arlington Cemetery, it's in the you know it's in the database. You link on, it takes you to the Arlington Cemetery photo. And I did not create it, okay, but I know that um, it's possible uh, to do. Because like I'm just sitting there thinking like with the Fitzhugh family, seeing a map of the Ravensworth tract, which I know is out there somewhere online, it'd be neat to link to the map of the Ravensworth tract. Well, you know, even if you just link to um, the, the, the best, best, Thingy. Mitchell, yeah. Mitchell, because it's such a big chunk of the middle. Right. Of <laughs> right. I see it as as not all the same. First of all, I don't by the word final. Uh, we can fi we can finalize the how we're pre the structure, but I see this going on and on as we find more and more, or as if people get in more people get involved with what we're doing. Um, in some instances, I I have to contact the, the little rest of museum because what they gave me, um, she pulled and put together a little listing of all the materials they have on African Americans in Reston, but I don't know that it's digitized, and I don't and you know so it could be that we're providing the information, but if somebody's interested in that, they either and they're and it's not at George Mason where where some is, then they. They know where it is and they'd have to find a way to go there. So, and we also have to connect into Chris because there's information at the Virginia room. Chris, I'm assuming some of it it's printed, but there's also digital things there. Like we're talking about Naomi's videos. So it, to me, the idea is getting some, getting a form, a format. So we can show all of the different kinds of things that we have, and in some instances, it will be there will be a link, and in some instances, there may not be a link, at least at the present time. So I'm probably muddying the waters, but that's how I view it. Would it be helpful um, if you would like to see if this group right now would like to see Montgomery County Historical Society's uh, web page? Okay, so I've looked right. it up. Let me share my screen. Yes. Oh, great. Thank you, Denise. Sure. I say that it's easy, but here it is. Okay. Um, all right, so can you all see this now? Yes. yes. Okay. So this is the Montgomery County history. This is their resources. So I went to research and then I went to search our collection. Search our collections and then I went down to general overview. <clears throat> And this is how they have their theirs organized. So information on our resources. They have books, which ha this takes you to the Montgomery County Public Library catalog. Cemeteries, cemetery records. So, um, wow, church records, and then court records. And then family records, and then maps, newspapers, oral histories, photographs, special collections, and vertical files. Can you send Good. us the uh, link to the yes. website? I'll drop or it in the chat. chat. Yeah, yep, I'll drop it in the chat. Yeah. That is so organized. Well, you all will be too. You're just starting out. <laughs> But that's not really a database. It's more of a website. Yep. Right. Yeah. But that's what, 
Yeah, that's what I thought they were talking about creating. That's on a database, or, or do you want a website? Because a, a a database is something you would input the data and be searchable. For example, like Mary, Mary um, has that Brad X True Gold site that was released what like a decade ago. I don't know who put right. that together, but that that's a database and it's searchable, and and that that's really cool. That might be an example you might want to check out. Um, but building a website, that's that's pretty easy. <laughs> well, one does not preclude the other, does it? Guess not. <laughs> Denise, if you can open BraddockHeritage.org, that's the Braddock's true goal. So BraddockHeritage.org. Okay, hang on. Braddock Heritage. And this was done by a GMU graduate student. Okay, now I need to. you guys again and share my screen. So our menu up there in the gold uh, band there. And mm -hmm. uh, so you can go to the actual transcripts of the uh, interviews or um, uh, we have the history. I did some educational lessons. So if you can click on any of those. So uh, browse resources. I'm clicking on browse resources. Yeah. 200. So you see there's the ebook and historical marker information. So it's just a listing there of stuff that we gathered along the way with the oral history interviews and all. Oh yeah, I did those. <laughs> oh, I, in addition, I love in this. Addition. <laughs> In addition to like photographs and documents that Mary and her group did, if you click on something like, I don't know, Fairfax County's economy, it's just kind of like an index entry. So like Barbara was saying, these other organizations like Mason or the Virginia Room, this could be something like, I don't know, the Cartersville map. And where is it? It's at the George Mason University Special Collections. And that could just be like an index entry. And then you could see on the right there, there's, well, this one has a file attached to it, but there's like, yeah. you could put tags and things like that there. Yeah, economy, Fairfax, yeah. I think variety, I th I think variety is important because we're collecting this from all kinds of places. So, um, yeah, uh, Chris, I'm sorry. Importance. Chris, is there finding aids for your family uh, vertical files and uh, cemetery? Well, the cemeteries are online, but I was just thinking of all those family files you have at the, um, Virginia room. Is there a finding aid for that? Yes, there is. It's uh, we put all of our finding aids on a website called Virginia Heritage. It's a consortium of Virginia University archives and, and libraries and courthouse archives. Um, but it's, it's nothing fancy. It's just kind of like an HTML website and it's just a, an inventory of what we have. And does it give a description uh, like who the family is or just list the name? I mean, it if somebody's particularly looking for African American uh, families, they wouldn't be able to sort it that way. Is that exactly. Right? It, it's okay. just it's just an index. It doesn't give any any kind of other information. It just says like like Smith family, and you just right. gotta hope that your Smith is in there. <laughs> Um, okay. but right now we are we are working on building a website that will highlight. African American records in the Virginia's collection. So I am currently harvesting things like our cemetery files and bio files to, to note that these we do have these here. And it's going to be like an African American Fairfax County history, like Pathfinder or Finding Aid or whatever you want to oh, call good. it. Good. Okay. And that has to connect with with whatever we put on our site because that's the whole idea. But is to connect connect these different uh, repositories. Exactly. And that'll include the schools, et cetera. Uh, the school records, so not not the sites like that. Like no, no, but I mean, you have files on the schools. Right, right, right. So we would have that. So it's we're kind of like double dipping. We're doing we're doing this for ourselves and also for the for you guys. Yeah, it's okay. great. Good. And then we could. Is there a way we could open? I don't know how many churches have. Um, or I don't know if Gum Springs has anything 
a lot of these places may not have anything online, but it would be nice if they did, if we incorporated their little cache of things um, on the list. Some of them have church histories, but it's right. nice to, of going through each one of them and finding them. Yeah, the church websites often will have a history drop down. Right. That you can select and um, yeah. some are some are very rich and some are you know tiny um and gum springs does have a little bit of online i mean it's the gum springs historical society they do have a little bit on time but it, online but it pales in comparison to for instance what's in the museum or in ron chase's brain yeah <laughs> yeah one of the problems with um collecting history of the churches is that the, the church historian normally keeps that information at home and then when right. that person dies it doesn't get passed on to the right. next historian um, so in some cases there's a lot in other cases there's very little because it never got passed on the best is when they put it in the virginia room yes <laughs> i agree <laughs> <laughs> That's even happened in my little church in Reston, and it's only like a 50 some years old. And, you know, I've been there so long that I sort of know have institutional memory, but there are fewer and fewer of us. And so there's lost chapters. And some, yeah, sometimes they've like, for instance, St. Luke's Church near me, they did a really great job and they would do it every decade. Well, they missed 2010. You know, and now now we're in 2020, so they, they've missed two decades. And it seems like, oh, everybody knows that. They'll remember it. But it's if down. you don't pause and write it down, that's right. It. That's right. That's true. Sounds like an Eagle Scout project. <laughs> well, I've been trying to get Woodlawn United Methodist to update theirs because theirs is in the Virginia room, but it goes up to 1980, maybe something like that. And you know, these folks are still alive. The, the Holland family's still there. And I want to say, write it down, just write it down. That's right. Yeah, you have, you have to get them to get the time and just sit them down and, and, and do it. That because that's one of the issues that, that Ron Chase was having. Well, it's our goal to have something on our website by the end of the year. And is that a, a final thing or is that a uh, preliminary? I don't see final as part of it because yeah. I see this right. is ongoing. It's not like when yeah. we started this, we said like the the C and I, it was like, okay, this is our block. We have to do whatever we can get done in this time. That's it done. Uh, but this, we don't have that. And so I would imagine, I mean, just like as Phyllis has talked about, um, the state is working on, you know, incorporating things into a full curriculum. And I see us, that's why I think it would be interesting to have something there and aim for aim for the conference is having something online that people can see what we've done so far. Mm -hmm. But that it should be like an ongoing, uh, an ongoing function of the History Commission. It so may, I, I mean, that's, that was my idea, but I'm um, right. kind of all of you guys, and I don't know if that's yeah. not a f final. So, so maybe by November, we could have some things listed, but that wouldn't be part of the, the database that we're building. Maybe, maybe we could just list a few things under maybe. 20 things out there, at least letting people know that that we are collecting. It's a living list. How's that? It's a living list. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's never going to be finished because there's always going to be things added to it. That's right. But but we could we could choose some things to to, to mm -hmm. go ahead and put out there by by our conference and maybe things that relate to um, what is being talked about in the conference and we can have samples like we can have families we could have uh, uh, communities pre-civil war communities um, and then the pines is like very much mid 20th century we could have samples so that they can <laughs> see we're not locked into one period we're talking about fairfax county history yeah that's a good idea to give samples 
Um, Esther, did you ever get in touch with that George Mason professor about um, building a database or having students in that program work with us? Did you say oh, yes? Uh, Sarah, oh, he, go ahead. Um, I was not able to connect with him because uh, this month has been really busy, so we've kind of kind of missed the communications. Um, but I hope to get with him in the next couple of weeks. Okay, well, I'll, I'll ask my husband. You can also just contact him. And my husband works on data mining and such. You know, not exactly building databases, but and he doesn't do anything with that program. But he also can identify the better students for that program to help us and you know find someone maybe who likes history, which is <laughs> right. But who can do that technical stuff too? Yeah, I wonder in the Nova uh, course, you know, the associate program in Nova, would that be something? You know, if we gave them the information that they could create the website or database or whatever we want as a preliminary. You an IT uh, component or you that, that might be an IT component. component. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, and there are classes on educational media and, and yeah, sure is a very hot topic right now. But to grab yeah. one of those classes and get a group to do it as a project would be great. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's why I said we need to know kind of an idea of what what we have and what we want to to see up there. Well, I I'd, I'd love the final to have the interactive, uh, you know, connections that you you know link to other sites or maps or whatever. But yes. that's down the road. You know? Right. 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 So if we do the templates. And our personal goal is to get through our templates by, mm -hmm. you know, 1 December. Uh, we'll certainly have some ready to show for uh, November. Um, there may be somebody out there at the conference that says, hey, I can do that for you. <laughs> Take it on. <laughs> yeah, or I have a grandson or son who could do this for you. Um, I don't know. Well, I do. Even even Brian's kids at West Springfield, they they had some really interesting projects that uh, that those interns were able to do. So right. So. Well, okay. I think I think we have some direction to uh, go forward and see, look at other databases, but also continue to do our templates. Yeah, and I'll I'll see what I can. Um, find in a way of websites or databases, whatever, and see if I can just share them with everybody, you know, and, and say, um, these are just examples. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, just the 1860 map is an example of interactive, you know, that we have on our, it has the two layers, you know, it has the county tax map laid over the 1860 landowner map. Right. And that's an example of interactive. Um, and I don't have that on my list for people to look at. Oh, that's a good. One. Um, I put in the chat the um, archives. I just, you know, put, it's research on African Americans, and they have different sections in that where they've got like a blog section, you know, where they've got something that's recently been written, uh, whatever a hot topic for the month is, and then they plucked out of their archives just a couple of, you know, favorite pieces that they want to highlight. Um, I've got that on my general sites list. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, and I pulled out the one where they talked about the um, black dispatches, which were uh, ex slaves or escaped slaves that were acting as Union intel, you know, gathering information for the Union Army. So, none from Fairfax County, but we did get as close as Culpepper. So. <laughs> <laughs> it gives you con gives context though that's yes. Yes. yeah and, and it's and part it of me some Virginia. it could be some of fairfax county that just nobody's aware of right you know so. that's true All right. you run a good meeting phyllis it's just an hour <laughs> <laughs> look how much we got done but my goal is always a, a one hour meeting and no longer. <laughs> so, now, when I was so, off, off board, did we 
say we want to resend the template? Yes. Okay. Yes. Would yes. you like me to? I can send my two examples. I did one of oral history and the Fitzhugh family. I could send my two examples if you like. That would be great. That, that would be great. Okay, I'll do that. That's an empty one too. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think I think Mary, I think we agreed that by putting by clustering everything that's that has a connection, like the fish, like right. under family, you have different places, but it's it's the family. The focus is the family, right? That the right. that the right. communities yeah. were at these different um, locales, but it's right. like one. Mm -hmm. And so I'll be doing like a side burden community that has a church, a cemetery, a community center, and a historical marker. They'll all go on the same template as as side burn. Well, Audric's Corners, you had Audric's home place and you had the school and you had the church. Yeah. And you have our marker. Right. Hey, you guys. Um, did you see? Sorry if I missed. The, this being narrated, but um, Denise put that past perfect online on the on the chat. Did we talk about that yet? Because I'm I'm learning past perfect, and so perfect. I'm not volunteering to do this, but it's an interesting option for this sort of database. It's you know it's a I haven't learned the online. I have an old version of past perfect. And uh, it's a database for collections of all sorts and archives. That's a oh, cool that's the thing. Montgomery. It's the Montgomery. Yeah, it's that last one that's really fat the, in the chat. Oh, yeah, Chris, Chris, and I were just chatting about it. Um, and I, so, uh, Anne, where where do you have a cop? Is that historic Vienna? It's historic it's Vienna. Historic. So, um, and it's the online version, past perfect, I forget what it's called. It's probably five and then some other name. Yeah, some of the museums use it. Yeah, it's for But it is a, a way of of um, of organizing and collecting the kind of data that you all are talking about. There's a lot of past perfect online. Tons of museums put their collection of all sorts online like this. That's a that's an interesting thing, you guys. Hmm. Yeah. Is similar so did you pay to have a website on there or something? Liz, what did you say? I said the past perfect program, uh, artifact cataloging program, is similar to rediscovery, which we use at the county. Right, which the park thirty uses, right? Yep. Yep. But yeah. Well, if you guys use rediscovery, it's always like which one do you use? Um, that's that's we should look at that as well. Well, isn't Liz? Isn't um, rediscovery more object oriented, where past perfect is more archival oriented? I don't. I mean, I know that past perfect is used for uh, for artifacts also. Okay. Um, I mean, there may be. It may be different modules because I think rediscovery also has a module for paper. For archives, okay. Yeah. Hmm. That's really interesting, you guys. So historic uh, Alexander I, uses it too. I do. Mm -hmm. I know before I worked here, there were some efforts to try to get it, but uh, my understanding was the county attorney turned it down, which is why we don't have any kind of software like that. Yeah, just put historic Alexandria in the chat. But there's you can look up like what groups in Virginia use it. So yeah, yeah. Afro American yeah. Historical Association, Hampton History Museum, the Handley Regional Library in Winchester, which is pretty good. Yeah, the uh, Alexandria has a lot of the collections on that, and I, um, I, I think I may have to learn it for that my work thing, but um, I haven't volunteered yet because I still haven't been to the story <laughs> map. It's like, you know, you volunteer for one thing and suddenly you have four projects on your plate all at the same deadline. Yeah. 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 So there's a lot of options. This is very kind of exciting. Shall we use this next month? 
pillars to just look at all the different ways people do it and think about what we like? I'm sorry, Barbara, I didn't hear you. It wasn't Barbara, it was Anne. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, yes. Anne. I just, I think, you know, we can, I feel like we're on a roll thinking about this. And if we really look at all these uh, things that have been put in the chat and that have, that we just run across by Googling, might kind of each of us get a feel for what, what we think would be a great product by the end. Right. So, so everybody could take a look at these different things and then at our next meeting, um, which is July 13th at 2.30, um, we could then, that would be the major topic for discussion. Is there a way we could share them ahead of time? Denise, is there a way we could get them to you? Sure. Um, I'm trying to think. I could put a spreadsheet. Well, no, gosh, I can't do that. Let me think. How can we, how can you all collaborate on something like that? Um, but if you wanted to share them with me and then I could disperse them to the whole group, that would be fine. Okay. That. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Cause we really don't have a way of you all contributing to one file. Yeah. We can right. do a Google, a Google yeah. drive. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. <laughs> right. Wouldn't like a Google doc. Yeah, it would. But yeah, no, I'm 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 happy to to um, disseminate them as they come in. So we'll just say AAI possible database or whatever and send it yeah. to them. Okay. Yeah. Do you wanna um here's here's a bad question. Do you want us to make any comments or do we just send a bunch of raw raw data, raw uh, list of of possible things to look at, or do you want it to be a little column that we add to it that says, I like this part and I like that part? Or does that start to make it too much of a pain in the neck for everybody? I think we should be able to talk about that at a meeting and not write it out. I mean, there's so okay. much, there's so much stuff coming into us now. Yeah. And you know, Google Docs doesn't like me. It's crazy. I'm. I we can't, can't do it anyway. Things. So, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So we know what we're doing for the next meeting. Is and if when I, I'm, I'm sorry. What I can do is I was saying about the spreadsheet is as you send them to, to the links to me, I can send them out to the group, but I can also drop them in a spreadsheet. So when we come together the next time. To talk about it, they're all in one place and we can, okay. you know, just go through them and look at them. I do like that the idea of, of always calling them. Let's, let's think of a subject line where when we, when we're yeah. pulling them together, we actually, even though you're going to do that for us, Denise, but as they trick plan, it'd be nice to recognize them easily and stick them in a file. So what do we, what do you want to call it, Mary? You, you want to say, call them, yeah. AAI what? AAHI. AAHI. HI, yep, sorry. Uh, database. Database. Uh, examples. Example. No. Database examples. Database okay. examples. So put that in the subject line. AAHI data. If we can remember. Examples, yeah. Well, I'll be glad to get the minutes out. Hopefully to fill us by Monday. <laughs> well, this is only Tuesday, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Maybe by but Friday. Monday's good, Mary. No problem. <laughs> well, this is my third thing doing today, and I have one more at eight thirty tonight. Oh, I know. Oh, my my last one for the day is at six. So. Oh, yeah. So. But, okay. <laughs> Really good to have Zoom that I can wear my antiques roadshow big t shirt and all these things. We will miss this. We'll have to dress like real adults to meet. So there are good things about Zoom. We get a lot of you fun. can't We're see fun. that I'm in my you can't see it. I'm in my house slippers. And when I'm, I'm in the house, I don't wear shoes. Nobody <laughs> wants to see me in shorts. It's it's just the waist up. All right. Thanks everybody. And Thank we'll you. See you on, on the 13th.
Much got much thank accomplished. You. Thank you all. And thank, thank you, Chris you. and Liz and Denise, for giving us more of your time. Yes, thank you. Yes. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.